He planned to have his car replacer and railway frog manufactured in New Jersey, but instead looked west to the booming town of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Fortunes were being made in Pittsburgh. The city's location at the joining of two major rivers made it the ideal spot for manufacturing and distribution. In the 1860s, the air was thick with smoke as the iron and steel industry grew, churning out metal for tracks, engines, and the myriad of machines, tools, and devices used to build the network of railroads crisscrossing the country. Legend has it that as George stepped off the train, he practically walked into one of Pittsburgh's wealthiest investors. The very first night he was here, evidently he's lost his way downtown. He saw this gentleman coming his way and stopped him and asked him for directions. That fellow's name was Ralph Bagley. Ralph happened to be going in that direction, he said, so he walked along with George Westinghouse to show him where he was going that evening. And from that chance meeting, him and Ralph Bagley became great friends for the rest of their lives. There's some mythology around the meeting. Within a week, he had somehow made a business connection there. And that would have been typical. Westinghouse was, was the type of guy that went into a city. He was a salesman. He was probably looking for the industrialist in town. He had an invention. He needed some suppliers to make that part. Westinghouse type of guy that uh, still even you know, all through his career would hustle. He'd be out there knocking on the doors of industrialists.